Yo, what's Yo, up, man? What's up? what's up, brother? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. How does it feel to have the biggest freaking song in the entire world right now? Man, I feel like Obama in 2008, man. I'm winning. <laughs> I'm winning. <laughs> You're winning all over the place, bro. Congratulations on that. I mean, you put out an absolute banger. You and Ian Dior, mood is an absolute banger. I was playing golf over the weekend with my boys, and, you know, we had it on repeat pretty much the entire time we were on the golf course. Well, I got I to gotta give a, a, a special thanks to you because I remember Casey 101 and you were one of the first people to, to actually play this record in America. So you're obviously a trendsetter and a man of great taste. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, my man. I appreciate I appreciate you recognizing that because not many artists do. So I definitely appreciate you recognizing for sure. So tell me a little bit about, you know, Dropped Out of College was your EP. You, you did actually drop out of college and now you've got the biggest song in the world. Tell me about like the last year. Obviously with COVID-19, we couldn't have predicted everything that has kind of gone down the way it has. So what, what's it been like for you? Man, you just saying the last year is like making me like think like of all the things that have happened this year. And I, it's been such a weird year, you know, from, from leaving uh, my, my, my apartment downtown, moving into this, this new house to, you know, having, having a global pandemic, traveling around, dealing, deal, having City of Angels blow up in the beginning of the year. And then, you know, kind of that, that tapering off and then to have mood to come out on the other side. Like this has been probably the best year ever for my career and it's the weirdest year ever but i don't know things things never make sense so i'm just taking uh taking the blessings as they come and think about it a year ago if you told if you if we we're having this conversation and we were about to tell you yo you're gonna have a global pandemic sports aren't gonna play for the entire year nobody is gonna be going on tour there's gonna be no shows no nothing you would have been like yo you need you need to go like get checked out or something if you think that is gonna happen and look at that's where we're at yeah, if, if somebody told me like, yo, next year there's going to be a, a global pandemic, but you're going to get um, a, a top 10 song in the world and they're going to play your music on the radio everywhere from America to the UK to Nigeria, I would have been like, what? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't make sense, but it makes perfect sense. So I'm happy with it. For sure. So your style is definitely unique. And I think that is why so many people are drawn to it. You're a little bit of alternative. You're a little bit of hip hop. You're a little bit of rap. You're a little bit of kind of everything in between. Tell me about growing up. What were the biggest styles of music that really influenced you and what you like to do? I mean, growing up, I was listening to everything. Like both my parents, you know, they they were big music heads themselves. Like my mom, she would go to the to the public library and like take out CDs and burn them onto the computer so she could like Damn. have them forever. So she got yeah. like a 40, 45, 50, 50,000 song library. So growing up, I got to listen to everything from, you know, she put me on the Kanye West, but she was also showing me classical music and, you know, Lauren Hill and, and, and stuff like that. So I got a, I got a wide variety of influences. That's awesome. So you got a little taste of that old school with like the Lauren Hill in the 90s, in addition to the Kanye and everything from, you know, from the 2000s. Yeah, but I'd say the rock stuff, I really kind of found myself like, like through video games and, and movies growing up. And, you know, my friends, uh, as I got older, they kind of reintroduced it to me, whereas like I was learning about music that I already had heard versus like discovering something new. Yeah, for sure. Now, during the pandemic, obviously, it's been difficult to get in the studio and to do a lot of the things that somebody, you know, especially, you know, up and coming like you from where you were at would be normally doing. What have you been doing to kind of keep your music going so that After Mood is the number one hit in the world that we have more stuff from you? I mean, I'm always working six months ahead. I already got the next three singles lined up, you know, so yeah. everything, everything that I'm working on now is for the six months after that and uh, just trying to make the best album possible. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we got football coming up. I know that you're from the Bay area. So were you, you were you a Raiders fan or a 49ers fan? I'm a Niners fan. I'm from San Francisco. You know, I remember um, when Candlestick Park used to be the spot before they tore it down and people started selling the seats on eBay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but now, now they're in Santa Clara. Um, I went to a game last Christmas actually and that was, that was my first time going to a football game in real life, despite having grown up there. So that was really dope. And uh, they just reached out to me on Instagram, and they said they want to send me some, some drips. So shout out to my Niners. Hell yeah. So you're looking forward to the season coming back on Sunday. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a big basketball fan, so I've really been enjoying watching the bubble and, and seeing how that, 
how that all plays out. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to see sports coming back and give people something to uplift their spirits during some rough times. For sure. Now tell me about Ian Dior. You guys work together, obviously, on Mood. Tell me about what the process was, you know, you kind of linking up with him and where it went. I mean, we were just chilling at his crib, yo. Like, when, when the day that we made Mood, we weren't even planning on making music. Like, it was just me, Omer, uh, KBZ, Ian, and Ryan, his friend, and he engineered the song, uh, or he recorded us. And me and Ian were playing Call of Duty uh, Warzone gunfights. I think it was like Rust just messing around while Omer and KBZ were making the beat. And I wasn't trying to make music. I wasn't like, what's going to be a, a top 10 earning chorus? I was literally just focused on the game and ended up randomly singing what, what became the hook to the song. The, Why are you always in a mood? I just started singing that because that's how that beat made me feel. And yeah. Omer, one of the producers, he was like, stop everything. Lay that down. That's some hot shit right there. So I did. Ian did his verse. I did my verse. And now we're, we're here today. You know, it's always wild hearing about that, where you hear so many people put months into writing a song and then recording it and producing it over and over again. But sometimes it comes together like that. You know what I mean? Like just that quick, spontaneous, boom, we got something here, you know? And that, I think that is one of the unique things about music in general is that you can have it be such a big planned out process or you can just have it rock like that. Yeah. You know, I, I think to each their own and everyone finds what works for them, but I don't know, in my, in my experience from Valentino to City of Angels to Mood, all of, my, uh, all of my biggest songs have felt really natural and they come together really naturally. Like It's never the ones that I'm stuck in the studio racking my brain trying to figure out the right lyric or, or how to finish it that pop off. You know, it's the ones that just flow. Now, I don't know. I, I probably should have looked beforehand. Are you on TikTok? Because obviously I know you've gotten a lot of vi viral, you know, following from TikTok. Are you on there? Are you making TikToks? Yeah, I mean, not so much anymore just because it's, it's a lot of effort, yo. Like, like if you really want to be popping on TikTok, you got to be making videos every day. And I'm a, I'm a rapper at the end of the day. I'm an artist. I'm not a TikToker. But that was something that was fun. And especially when, whenever I'm on tour. Uh, or the, like the beginning of, of coronavirus is being bored. That was that was fun to do. Yeah, I mean, I embarrassingly did Savage because everybody here at work made me. And my oh, girl, yeah. My girlfriend finally gave me the courage to put it up. It took like a month, and she's finally like, nah, just screw it. You ain't going to lose me. Just put <laughs> it up. But it's horrible. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, there's so much work into the – I only did one TikTok. You know, never mind people like Jason Derulo that are over, out here doing 250 of them. Yeah, so that that's a that's a whole another grind of itself. And if I was on that same grind, I don't think I have enough time to make the music that you guys love. But nothing but respect for for those people, and and nothing but love for the TikTok community for you know showing me love. No doubt about it. Well, twenty four K Golden, great catching up with you, my man. Appreciate it. We're gonna bang mood on the radio in about a half hour, and I'm gonna turn it all the way up. Good stuff, my man. Yo, thanks for real for everything, man. I I really appreciate you uh, believing in me and, and showing love off the jump, man. All right, brother. Have a good one, man. Peace.